Welcome to Superhero Pow. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frumgen. You know, in these woke days, comic book companies are all on the lookout for more diversity to help sell their comics. Because let's be honest, they don't really care about what's in the comic, just that it sells well. But of course, we readers do care about what's in the comic book. And I think we are all tired of DC creating more Robins, Green Lanterns, and Supermen in the name of diversity. So instead, here is a top 10 list of minority superheroes DC should use more often. And I should mention that this is a list, not a countdown. Number one, Bloodwin, a short-used hero from the Justice League America days. Okay, he should probably get a better name and lose that ugly thigh band. But aside from that, Bloodwind is very cool, a sorcerer who can punch it up with some of DC's most powerful villains. And overall, he's just badass looking, which is very important in comics. Number two, Firebrand. White women are still a minority, aren't they? In that case, here is Firebrand. Actually, Firebrand 2, then at Riley, from the pages of the All-Star Squadron. Firebrand 1 was her brother, Rod Riley, from the quality comics days. He was just your typical street-level hero from the 1940s. But his sister, created in 1981, was your typical flame-powered hero. Like Marvel's Human Torch, her body is covered in flame, can fly, and can shoot varying degrees of flames from her hand. Just find a way to move her into the here and now, and she'd be great. Number 3. Tasmanian Devil a little-known character from the Global Guardians. In the late 80s, he became a supporting member of the Justice League International, stationed in his home country, Australia. Eventually, he was revealed as gay, and I don't think you can call it a retcon, because he barely had any appearances before coming out. I don't know, three or four? But like Marvel's Sasquatch, Hugh Dawkins grows in size, gets covered in fur, and becomes a world-class powerhouse. So, more of him, please. Number four, Onyx. A reformed League of Assassins member, Onyx is a world-class martial artist, briefly appearing in Green Arrow's Detective Comics backup series. Of course, more recent writers have turned her into a mess, so I say, get her back in this suit and let her kick some ninja ass. Please. Number five, Amazing Man. Created in the 1980s for the 1940s superhero team, the All-Star Squadron. He's basically a heroic version of Marvel's Absorbing Man. His body can become whatever he touches. Now, DC has brought out his descendants with Amazing Man 2 and Amazing Man 3, but enough of the clown show. Just get Will Everett in the here and now and let the good times roll. Number 6. Celsius. A former leader of the so-called New Doom Patrol, Arani Calder was one tough chick. And if there is a minority in superhero minorities, it's Indian females. So it's a crime that DC doesn't give this cool character more respect. Because not only is she a badass martial artist, she also has the ability to shoot burning flames and freezing cold from her hands. Of course, more recently, she has been maligned by other writers. But cut the crap, DC. The world needs this hero. Number 7. Wildcat. Actually, Wildcat 2 one-time member of Infinity, Inc. You see, Mexican-American Yolanda Montez was the successor to the original Wildcat, Ted Grant, except she had big cat powers. But of course, DC decided to kill her in a lame way, and then went on to create an even lamer Wildcat successor. So DC, please just stop it and bring Yolanda back. It will be a win for everyone. Number 8. Tsunami Again, another character from the pages of the All-Star Squadron. Originally a villain, Japanese-American Mia Shimada, angered by racism, sided with Imperial Japan in World War II. Eventually, she switches sides and joins the young All-Stars. Like Aquaman's wife Mira, Mia is extremely tough, can breathe underwater, and can control water, to the point of creating, you guessed it, tsunamis. Or tidal waves, if you prefer. And if for any other reason, she's an Asian superhero who isn't a martial artist or have light-based powers. So let's see more of her. Number 9. Tempest. No, not Aqualad Tempest. The original Tempest from the new Doom Patrol. 
the guy who can create kinetic energy to either blast something into pieces or fly through the air. Joshua Clay needs to become a respected hero in the DCU, not a doormat for any writer looking to prove the importance of their new supervillain. So get on it, DC. And number 10, Flying Fox. An actual Native American superhero. Come on now. Look how frickin' cool this guy is. Another member of the short-lived Young All-Stars. This unnamed shaman can philosophize and cast spells with the best of them. And nobody really cares how you bring these cool and fun characters into the present day, so just do it and make everyone happy. Okay, DC? For honorable mentions, I'll throw in Impala, the African speedster, Dr. Mist, the mystic leader of the Global Guardians, and XS, the speedster from the 31st century. Oh, and credit where credit is due. All the 80s all-star characters and Wildcat 2 were created by Roy Thomas. That's half the list. The man knows how to create cool characters. He helped create Wolverine, Power Man, Ultron, Red Sonja, Ghost Rider, and dozens more for crying out loud. Anyway, there's the list. So DC, before you start thinking you need a couple more Shazams, why don't you start using some of the great characters you already have? I should probably be writing for you, shouldn't I? Either way, thanks so much for spending time with me. And did I miss anyone? Be sure to let me know your faves. And if you could be so kind to like and subscribe, I won't have to ask you next time. Ah, who are we kidding? Of course I will. <laughs>